In this video I'm going to demonstrate how I go from a script to a storyboard and I want to show you some techniques on different brushes to use in Photoshop, the using animation layers, and some different methods and things to consider when actually building an animatic from those storyboards. This video is not actually intended to teach you how to do storyboards. Storyboarding is a very intricate involved industry and there are a number of really good books that will teach you about the actual process of storyboarding, how to communicate camera moves and how to tell a really good story using visual panels. The best way to go through all this is to actually get some of these books. One really good one is called Directing the Story by Francis Glebus. You can get it online on Amazon and it's a great, great, great book for teaching you how to tell a good story. And I've definitely read it more than once and will probably have to read it again. Really, I'm kind of a beginner and this, what I'm showing you here is my gorilla method of at least getting the image to the client in a rudimentary stage so that they can see where we're going. The key to any good storyboard is a good script, but you need to read it first. I've definitely had a tendency not to want to read the whole script and not go through it all. And by not doing this, you can miss really important factors. You don't get a lot of detail in a script typically. There's not tons of information. So you have to get the information about a place by reading the whole script. So in this particular scene, I have an interior bathroom and the, the girl flushes the toilet, steps from the sink and washes her hands. Now if I were to just read this through straight and not really read all the way through, I would just see that the house actually transforms and this bathroom goes from a bathroom and then turns into an old Greek bathroom from the ancient, ancient times. Now if I didn't keep reading, I wouldn't really know that we come back to this bathroom and then the bathroom basically breaks down into a diagram that shows where all the water and all the sewage and everything in the house is going. By knowing this, it helps me plan how I'm going to build the house and it also helps me in the storyboarding phase because I don't just draw one little bathroom specifically. I also know I need to build a huge frame for a house and sort of start planning how all the pipelines work. So it can really help me with my visual research. And a big part of that research is going through the script and figuring out all the different things I might need to know, how they look, how they function, so that I can draw them and actually animate them and make all the connections visually that are merely suggestions in the script. Okay, so as you can see here, here's a number of really useful visuals that help me understand how how the plumbing in a house works and I didn't really know any of this stuff before so you just you have to go through and I have to sort of sort of visualize what's actually happening in a house in the script the little girl ends up going on a journey through her bathroom sink into the down the sewage pipes in her in the walls of her house and into the main sewage line of the city supply and out into a water treatment facility in the country and since learning is part of the objectives of these videos, I need to make sure that I'm accurate in my depictions of that journey. By doing all this visual research beforehand, I can address some of the challenges that will come up in the design of the actual piece and the many sets that I need to use, like this bathroom here. So once I've gone through and found enough images, I save them all together and put them in a folder that I can access when I'm starting to create the storyboards. All right, so we're here in Photoshop. And usually when I'm starting storyboard, doing storyboard stuff, I'll put the workspace into painting. So I'm going to create a new composition and I usually make it 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution of the actual finished piece. Just helps me keep so the framing's the same. I don't usually work with a white background. I find it really hard. It's a little bit too stark. So what I'll often do is I'll just create a solid color and make it a gray just a medium gray and then from there I can just start drawing usually I have a whole bunch of different brushes that I've actually made uh, you can use just the default brushes if you'd like um, really depends on the look that you like to go for I typically like to have the ability to shade so um, I can adjust some of these settings in the brush tool here and in my shape dynamics everything's fine here but I need to turn on transfer and make this the pen pressure and then now I have opacity. The one problem is you can see these weird steps in here. Uh, if to get rid of that you just put the spacing closer together until it's smooth. So now I have this brush here that can go from semi-transparent to full hard. So this is a nice smooth brush. 
And if you want to save these brushes, just right click and then click the new button and then you can save that. I also have other ones that I've manipulated or done. So this one here is sort of, um, gives a little bit more of a rougher look. It just gives more of a natural pen stroke look. I can add the transfer dynamics if I want. And it's really fast. So it's not, it doesn't have all the fancy textures that some of the other brushes have. So if you look at it, it's really just an oval brush. I just grabbed a circle brush and it's an oval. Its hardness is fairly up. I can bring its spacing closer together if I want, but its spacing is also very, fairly high. Yeah, and then I really just have a roundness jitter on. I put the minimum roundness up so it doesn't get too skinny. And um, yeah, and a size jitter and an angle jitter. So it's really just flying all over the place. And that gives me a nicer, rougher edge, a more interesting edge without the processor cost of maybe more more sophisticated brushes, which can can be a little slower to work with. Not quite necessary when doing storyboards. The other thing, the other thing that is important to know is in, I didn't know this for a long time, but in Photoshop, there is actually an animation tool, an animation layer, where you can work with frames. And the way this works is you have to, first of all, you have to create a layer that can be animated. So you go to video layers and you go new blank video layer. Okay. And then you'll see it's a video layer by having this little icon there. And then, and then you can essentially draw on these layers. Let's just do a quick face here. And move down, move through frames, and turn on onion skinning. There we go. And you can do little animations. obviously horrible but uh, and then you can step through them let's turn on the skinning off so you can actually animate in in Photoshop now there's a few settings that you need to be aware of the onion skin settings here so you just click this little thing here and you can tell how many frames before or after sometimes I do zero before and just after two or three. The blend mode is also important because multiply makes everything dark. Normal keeps things light or you can do a screen. So it really depends how you're working. I find the darken can sometimes be really distracting. So let's turn that back on. There you go. If you want to move forward and backward in frame, it's actually really hard just to scrub in here. You can just press control um, right right bracket. There's a control right bracket that you can use to go forward and backwards. Another thing you can do is you can go to your preferences and you can assign so in keyboard shortcuts if you want you can assign your own keys for the animation that whatever you're comfortable with. So animation timeline and what we can do here is next frame Next frame, previous frame. There's already uh, there's already things assigned here, but this is what you can use. You can change these if you like to whatever you want. So it's not the most intuitive animation interface ever. But once you've animated something, the next thing you can do is you can actually export the animation layer. So in export, you go render video, and then you can tell how you want to render the video. So you want to do a quick time or maybe you just want to do a TIFF sequence so image sequence there's TIFF files blah 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 you, and you can pick your range uh, you can set your range in here so you can set the range in here or you can set the range in the little export settings so I've animated this guy and I can now file export video so you can do it that way or the other thing you can do is you can this is not the best way, but you can also duplicate the layers. See, so yeah, I've got three frames, and I can rasterize this layer on the frames that I want. So rasterize, and this one I'll move through one, and I can rasterize this layer, and then go to the next frame, and rasterize this layer. And so then this gives you the actual individual frame layers that you might need. The other cool thing about animation layers is, 
that you can use all the brushes and all the tools that Photoshop is capable of to do your little things. So if you have this person's face here, let's turn on onion skinning. Why is that not showing? Oh, I need to check my settings here. Onion skin settings, frames before. Oh, let's do two, sorry, and zero there. Okay. So in this one, we're going to go boom. Okay, I don't love the onion skidding because sometimes it's really hard to tell. So I'm already seeing that this isn't really working. So let's try and multiply there. That's better. Uh, let's put the mouse there. Blink. So with this particular thing here, I could do a tween on this. Well, not a real tween, but I can do a Okay, so let's say you have these three layers, or these three images, and now what I want to do is add in-betweens. So what I can do is just insert a layer, video layers, insert frame, blank frame, right there. So now I've got a blank frame. And so now I can step through, and let's change our onion skin settings, because now we're doing in-betweenings. I just want to have one in there, and then now I can do my in-between frames. So this eye is going to be slightly closed. This eye will be here, slightly closed. So I've got my breakdowns here. It doesn't really matter about his head. So there we go. Let's turn on the skidding off and see how it looks. You can create multiple layers. So if I were to create a new video layer, new blank video layer. I could use this layer to paint underneath the character. So let's turn this brush way up. Oh, I have a really funny brush on. Okay, let me turn this brush way up. Actually, let's get this guy. I'm gonna go to one of these guys. So this guy will be good. There we go. So what I can do also is I can create another layer. Let's make sure I'm on the right one, yeah. And I can paint with it and then I can move forward and do the same thing. So I could technically also color my layers in this using this methodology here. Just a step forward and back and make sure. Okay, so pretty pretty straightforward, pretty simple. This is one way to do, if you want to do more animatic or more detailed little animation movements, this can be a way to pull it off. Yes, there we go. And I'm just checking back and forth to just see where my light sources are. There. You can change your frames per second in here, but you want to probably do that before you get started. So if you go into the panel preferences here and you go to document settings, you can change this down to different frame rates. You can do something as low as like four frames per second if you want. Um, so if we do a custom here for do four frames per second, duration, that's fine. You can actually change this, but it will break your animation in here. So you want to do it before you actually do it. And I don't usually even use it because I just more flip through and then I separate the layers later. Anyways, so that's uh, using animated layers. So that can be one useful tool when doing some storyboarding. This video is actually getting a little bit long, so I'm going to end it here. And in the next piece, I will demonstrate some more techniques and thoughts on storyboarding and building animatics.